So the January transfer window is upon us. It's going to be a huge one. This could make or break the rest of our season. So we are at January 1st. The start of the transfer window has came. And we have an opportunity to change our season's expectations now. It was to attempt to avoid relegation. We are obviously going to do that. Avoiding relegation increases our transfer budget by about 2 million. And our wage budget by about 60k. Uh, avoiding a relegation battle. I mean... You're talking such tiny increases. I think I'm going to go with avoid relegation. It gives us the most increase in transfer budget and wage budget for us to be able to actually make some changes without going completely beyond in terms of the expectations and stuff. I still want to give myself that flexibility in terms of massively exceeding the board's expectations whilst also getting the most money out of them that I can. So I've sat and had a think about what exactly would be best for this squad. We do have one side and I'll talk about him in a second. Do we actively try and sell those players who are worth a lot of money, who are not currently in our first 11? The particular players I am talking about, let's sort by Jamal Limfo, let's get the value up. I am talking particularly about the likes of Chris Dubelbis, worth 22 million quid, not part of our first 11. Sebastian Claro, 21 million quid, not part of our first 11. Stamenkovic, 19 million. Gavin Barton, 15 million. Frankie Grand, 23 million. We've got some sellable assets in terms of the players that we could theoretically replace with very cheap signings in terms of loans or in terms of just cheap permanent transfers now it's a, it is a risk upsetting the squad in terms of the dynamics and stuff chris dubelbis in particular is our vice captain actively trying to sell him is particularly if i'm unsuccessful could really upset the apple cart so i'm thinking i might take a little bit of a different strategy than what you might have seen from me previously maybe i'll just sit on this squad and if people come in for them players, for oh, happy days, I'll probably just get more money than if I offered them out. But if they don't, just being content with our squad might be the way to go to get the most out of the rest of this season. I, it leaves me feeling a little bit icky not making major changes in January as I tend to do. But it might be the best way forward. We have made one signing though, Richard Huanko, 575k central midfielder. He's not, he's not anything special, just a little bit of potential. Someone to loan out. See if he improves and give Stoke City a sellable asset for the future. So in terms of the games today, we've got Watford in the FA Cup third round coming first. Wolves, Leeds, Norwich and Barnsley all in the Premier League. If we do beat Watford, we'll probably have a fourth round FA Cup somewhere in between Norwich and Barnsley as well. But um, let's get through it all and see if anything happens. So we've just played Watford in the first game of today's episode, the FA Cup thrift round. And if you can see by the top left-hand side of the screen, we did end up managing 5-2. Sokolov equalised in the 10th minute after Watford had put themselves in front only two minutes beforehand. Deco Dover then picks up the ball on the left-hand side and puts us 2-1 up 12 minutes in. Watford then equalised shortly after 25 minutes in. Jonathan Aziz getting his second goal of the game to make a 2-2. And that's how the first half finished. And I wasn't very happy with that. But shortly after the uh, the beginning of the second half, we got ourselves back in front once again. Frankie Grand got the start in today's game and managed to get himself a goal, which was absolutely fantastic. We'll speed this up a little bit. As Victor Hugo Cruz goes through, puts us 4-2 up, 55 minutes in. One more goal to come. Milanovic to Dubelbis to Deco Dover to Cruz, who then buries that from long range. 5-2 was the final scoreline and a thoroughly deserved win. So the next game of today's episode was a crushing 2-0 away defeat against Wolves. Not a good performance by ourselves. And suffering defeat against a side like Wolves sitting in the mid-table is massively, massively disappointing. And we definitely lose traction against those at the top of the table. We get a major signing over the door. And probably the only signing we're going to be able to make during the January transfer window. Miyama. Dezavarovic, <laughs> he's a goalkeeper from Southampton. I spoke to the board. They said they were willing to actually make the deal happen and they have made it happen. £35 million, the fee, £81,000 per week. A goalkeeper and he's a definite upgrade on Stefan Polk. One of the few positions that we didn't upgrade during the uh, summer transfer window. And if we just compare the two here, looking at the polygon, you can clearly see Zverevich is definitely a better option than Stefan Polk. And if we go to that review, you can see clearly in pretty much every single avenue, he ha is a slight upgrade on every area, which hopefully can produce some magnificent results for us over the course of the rest of this season. Stefan Polk will just become a backup player. Um, maybe we even try to sell him. I might actually try and do that and raise some funds for some further signings. But 
As you can imagine, we now have nothing left in the transfer budget. The wheels are well and truly coming off, boys. Our third defeat in the league on the bounce. Leeds United this time. Our goalkeeper got no goal on his first start. Zaratia did equalise then in the 60th minute by a fantastic free kick. But 68 minutes in, Ben Hur got through and gave Leeds the second goal of the game. And despite our domination in terms of the match stats, at least in terms of possession, we're pretty even in terms of shots. Oh, it's just another defeat and it's really demoralising. This game was such a welcome relief. I thought it was going to go badly from the start. Norwich City taking the lead 13 minutes in. But Lewis de Cordova had a fantastic game getting a hat-trick and one assist. That was his first 39 minutes in. We get another one shortly before half-time. Redick rather feeding it through and de Cordova with a tidy, tidy finish. He completes his hat-trick in the 47th minute. Zarate with the ball through and de Cordova getting on the end of it once again. And we wrapped things up nicely. I think with Stel Vargen gets a final goal of the game from the edge of the area. Fantastic strike by him coming on off the bench. No, he started actually. Um, what's his face? Delonzo is injured. But thankfully we get a, ourselves a 4-1 win. And we finally stop the rot of defeats. I can't believe we are going to miss out on this boy. He's not interested in discussing terms with me, unfortunately. A £34 million bid had been accepted. And believe you me, I have some ways and means in getting that money. Robert Rusfeer. He's more interested in talking to Schalke and Tottenham Hotspur, which, you know, for a side that's sitting in third in the Premier League currently, is still involved in the European competition whilst he's playing for Mainz. I mean, come on. Come on, mate. Why, why aren't you interested? And here we have our first major sale of the window. Vedran Stamenkovic is leaving the club for £18.5 million, going to join Burnley in the Championship. He was a good player in the Championship for us. He scored, what, 25 goals and 12 assists. In 41 games. But he's only played once in the Premier League for us this season. Coming off the bench. And um, I was happy to get rid of him to be quite honest with you. He was a bit of a pain in the arse. Constantly asking for new contracts. Um, and Decord over has completely overtaken him. In terms of the pecking order of the squad. Two more big sales are going through. Radomir Stefan Polk. Our first choice goalkeeper. Is going to leave the club. And join Leeds United for 10.5 million quid. I kind of get him registered. To be quite honest with you. We need to uh, free up a foreign space. So he is going to leave. And Sebastian Calero is also going to leave £20 million to Burnley. Good luck to them. They've spent plenty of money and uh, brought in a couple of our players now, spending close to £40 million. Uh, We'll look to replace them. Well, we don't need to replace the goalkeeper, but we'll look to replace Sebastian Calero in this window. It's not going to be with the Hungarian. I've went in again. I've declared him as a top target. I've uh, assigned a scout. I can't do anything more to try and attract interest from him to actually join us. So we're just going to um, have to look for somebody else. So our next new signing is through the door. Elias Scafidis for 8.25 million. He's replacing Stamenkovic. Is our sort of backup third choice striker. He's a pretty good player. Very well rounded. And uh, we've saved, what, we made 10 million pounds on the Stamenkovic sale by bringing him in. Younger, more potential. It just makes all the sense in the world. So we've just played Rochdale in the FA Cup fourth round and won 3 0. Frankie Grand getting himself a brace in today's game. Milanovic getting the other goal through to the penalty spot. A new Greek striker as well also made his debut and didn't play too badly. And it's just a comfortable enough victory. And here we have it, boys. Mauricio Chan is once again part of our side. We're signing him for £9.5 million from Arsenal. They're paying a lot of his wages. If you can remember, all those years back, we signed him for £10 million for Birmingham City. Only given him 48k per week. He is classed by the media as a world-class midfielder. And he was coming in to be able to back up to Sebastian. <laughs> what Sebastian Calero used to be. Maybe not a backup. Maybe he needs to start. Absolutely fantastically well-rounded, obviously. And uh, 179 caps for Mexico. <laughs> I mean, it's not often I sign a 32-year-old. But I thought, so a final season of your Yo Man. Mauricio Chan was on the transfer list by request. I think it's about time we bring him home. And get him involved for our run-in. It has been a crushing month in terms of results in the Premier League. We've just failed to defeat again away from home against Barnsley. They won 2-1, went 2-0 up early doors. 32 minutes in, they were 2-0 up. 65 minutes in, we got one back through Frankie Grand, but it wasn't enough. And uh, we fell to our third Premier League defeat so far this month. And what was a pretty even game as well. So with that result, that probably draws to an end our January transfer window. I'm not going to be looking for any more signings. And it really has been a disappointing month in terms of results. We've won three, lost three, but two of the wins were in the Cups, which basically don't matter at this point. 
Um, Wolves, Leeds and Barnsley as well. Not even against like the major, major sides in the league is hugely disappointing. Let's take a look where the Premier League table sees us then. We currently sit in fourth position. Six points off Manchester City now, top of the league. So with them, there's three defeats. We pretty much rule out the Premier League title challenge. I do believe anyway. You never know. Miracles can happen, but I don't anticipate it happening this season. Obviously, the defeat of Leeds and Barnsley, they're in third and fifth. So they're a little bit more understandable once you see the actual league table. But even with that, just the performances as well weren't very good against those sides. So we've actually made a huge profit during this transfer window. We've still got £30 million left and 150 k in the wages. We're obviously not going to be spending any of that. In terms of the next episode then, boys, it will be the knockout in the Europa Conference League. We enter the first round and we will be facing Lille in that. We'll play both legs and see if we can get to a final of a European competition during this series. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.